bar that's black that, that is connecting this with that. And you can see it has a strange development of, of stuff that's sticking out here. Uh, and uh, it has more of a structure of a little tree, you might say. Now this is the in-between one, which I think should be between the first one and the one I just showed you, because then that represents a progression of growth through there. And uh, to have it go from something to fully developed and back to something uh, halfway in between doesn't strike me as being correct. Um, but nevertheless, um, that's the way they've got it. And you see this now is only a, about a foot, I would guess, above the lunar surface. But you can see more of the character of this thing. Uh, it, it's, a, it's a funny looking structure. Uh, and uh, okay, so I think the mission that had been planned for this was that they wanted us to know that they're capable of, uh, of making a replica that looks like uh, something we've got. Uh, and they are very smart on, on shading of light. And uh, so you end up with, with uh, things that look like elements that we know. And yet they, they are very strange. OK, now if you can't read anything on this uh, map, that's all right, because I couldn't either. Um, what I want to do now is just simply to orient you uh, geographic-wise. Uh, the center of the picture is the zero meridian and across here the equator. Uh, this thing is stretched out laterally uh, to include 180 degrees clear over to this side and 180 degrees clear over to this side. So it packs everything in about Mars there, and uh, now the Helena's Basin um, right in here, and, uh, and that is a, a, a marker for where we're going to take a look at a, another Mars photo. And um, if you realize that um, the opportunity is around the rover, is around the um, zero position on Mars, and the other one is like 180 degrees opposite, it would put it on the very edge of this picture. And so uh, I, I wanted to get that concept of where you are so that if uh, the rover or spirit were on Mars when the next picture was taken, they would have got inundated, uh, particularly um, spirit. Okay, now what you see here is uh, a picture of Mars. It was shot from a distance of about 6.3 million miles. And can you bring up the light on that one a little bit? OK, uh, so this is the North Pole, and the South Pole is down here somewhere. But, but you see, there's strange growth through here. And you begin to wonder uh, just what that is. And so going on, now, yeah, there we go. Now what you see here is between these four arrows, there's an elliptical, elliptical uh, shape. Now that I marked as the nose. And it goes back, you can see that it goes back to here. And so I put a little dash mark as to the top line of, of the body. Uh, now here, here's a rising streamer. And here's a lateral projection. And uh, so what, what we've got there, a basis of what we know 
uh, our characteristics of an EMV, we got a, an EMV right in that area. And all kinds of things. Once it's there, you get all kinds of things that happen. You know, you got this thing going up, and then it can give emissions, and anything down this way, it can give emissions, and uh, so forth. And you can see that there's a lot of structure impacting here. And um, uh, it looks like even that uh, not all of Mars is there. Uh, okay, so in, in uh, lining up with respect to this picture, NASA says this is uh, Hellas Basin, which is what I just showed you on that other map where it was located. And so now you're looking over to the right from Hellas Basin and uh, 180 degrees away would put you up in here and um, that would be about where uh, Spirit would be. And were Spirit there under these circumstances, it certainly would not have lasted very long. And so it's not too surprising not too surprising to find that our rovers are in trouble. Now here's a photograph of the moon taken during the Apollo 13 mission. Uh, how do you like that? Uh, what is going on here is that there's an object up in here and it's uh, putting out some, well, this is sort of like a laser light uh, streamer. And this is a big member, that you, if you look closely up in here, you can see that it's, it's connected to a body. And it goes down into here and uh, puts out uh, something, you can see right in here, that, that's pretty husky. And uh, now what I found out in working this up that when you have something like this adjacent to the moon, it is definitely affected. And there's a crossbar down here that's light. Uh, this thing comes, the projection from up top side comes down into here, and then there's a, an offshoot from there. And so this part of the moon is aff uh, affected. So that you have a, a right angle area on the moon that is definitely affected by the presence of one of these EMVs. Um, so you see, the, uh, the moon is not a, a, uh, a very hostile place. It's actually hostile. And to, to, be, to be there, you're going to be exposed to some things, I think, that you don't want to be exposed to. Now, I put this in, in is to sort of uh, make you realize, if you will, um, where we are. Over to the left is a, a right flyer, and uh, over to the right is a, a jet airplane, a symbolic airplane. These are kites, and I flew the kites, and I challenged myself to get them both up there side by side, and uh, that's what happened here. And um, so we all know what the right flyer looked like and its capabilities, and we know what a jet fighter can do, but we got something that is way, way beyond uh, the jet fighter capability. Okay, now we're going to go into um, the concept of civilizations. Uh, there is a gent in, in the Soviet Union, and he's now in Russia, of course, uh, and I believe it's the same one in his paper I read when I was doing the foreign technology work. Um, his name is Kardashev, uh, Nikolai Kardashev. Uh, he proposed, uh, what I saw in the paper, he originally proposed that uh, a societal IQ is proportional to the amount of energy that you can um, successfully manage. In other words, uh, if you can manage nuclear power successfully, uh, and you had been not doing that, uh, you had stepped up to that, why your IQ just went up. And uh, since that time, why um, uh, there is a fellow, Kaku, a physicist, who locked onto some of, uh, Kaku, on, on some of the work of, of, of Nikolai and Nikolai has stated that, um, okay, there's the type 
one situation of civilization, a type two civilization and a type three. And of course there's a type zero and that's what we are. And um, so we're going to define this. Now a, a type one situation is where uh, a society can manage all the resources on earth. And here's a picture of earth and you have storms and weather. You're supposed to manage all of that to, to be entitled to be called a class or a type one uh, society. Now, if you're a type two society, uh, then you've got to be able to uh, show that you can manage all the resources of the sun. How do you like that? Uh, now, that projection up at the top um, shows that uh, it, it, it's a huge thing. I think I calculated like 80 diameters, something like that, Earth diameters. Um, and it even looks like, in the way they've got it presented here, that there, there's a big object in here. Uh, so it'll be interesting that, uh, to find that uh, we have the sun made up of uh, something else other than just uh, a nuclear fusion pot. Uh, and that's, that's my belief, uh, and it's, it's good that they, they've done this. And it looks also like this might be an EMV in there. And it's got the underneath stuff. It's uh, got a little circular area. This could be an overhead thing and also account for that wisp. So it looks like uh, uh, that the sun is not what we think it should be. And um, I am grateful for their color tuning of that to, to bring that element out. Okay, so now the sun is a situation where the type twos manage all of that energy, okay? And then you go to type three, and a type three civilization is supposed to be able to manage all the resources of a galaxy. And you know, that's quite a jump, that's quite a step forward, but that's, that's the way Nikolai Kardashev uh, has defined this. And uh, when you consider that the, the distance across a galaxy, then that's our galaxy, the Milky Way, 100,000 light years, hey, that's a, that's a big uh, area to travel in. How would you like to be managing something that was 100 years, uh, 100,000 years across? It's, uh, <coughs> its thickness was like 10,000 light years, and the thick part is like 30,000 light years. Okay, going on. Okay, here is my graph of what I call the physicist's playground. Um, now, down at the bottom here, uh, what we've got, well, first let me explain the overall thing. Uh, I put into perspective type one situation, type two, type three, and give an indication of where Earth fits into this pattern. Okay, now you 